Yeah. Good evening, folks, and welcome to the um, Cape Elizabeth Town Council meeting of Monday, March 9th. Would you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, for liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. And could we have the roll call by the town clerk? Chairman Bray? Here. Councilor Grennan? Here. Councilor Jordan? Here. Councilor Goslin? Here. Councilor Sullivan? Here. Councilor Wagner? Present. And Councilor Walsh? Here. Thank you. <clears throat> Moving on to the town council reports and correspondence. Are there anything that anybody wants to mention? Yes. Jessica. I'd just like to give an informal update <clears throat> on chairing the Solid Waste and Recycling Long Range Planning Committee. We've had four meetings. Our next one is uh, Wednesday, <coughs> March 11, the day after tomorrow. Uh, I think it's moving, on ex moving along extremely well. Um, we will be looking at some <coughs> brand new conceptual site plans on Wednesday and uh, certainly seem to be on track for our report at the end of June of this year. Wonderful committee, doing a lot of hard work. Thank you very much. Anybody else? <clears throat> okay, great. Then we'll move on to the Finance Committee report. Jim? Well, we have a couple of things. You have a dashboard in front of you. Again, this will be our third iteration. We're still working on it. Uh, Michael and I have discussed the discussion on revenue issues and expenditures at the bottom, and I think that we're going to take over the uh, those details because we we think you should be um, getting um, much more s uh, specificity about some of the items above. But um, again, this is the third iteration. We continue to perfect it. And uh, we have taken um, under advisement some of the things that people have mentioned. The debt service line is one of the items that people were interested in getting. Um, the second piece of the, the dashboard is the request by Jessica Sullivan last month to uh, just talk briefly about the overlay. And again, for the benefit of uh, you know, Patty, who's new to, uh, to our council, um, basically Cape Elizabeth sets its tax rate, tax rate based on the, the local tax valuation for the preceding year, not the year we're in, but last year. So the revenue from that additional valuation in the current year is uh, from new construction or approved subdivisions um, is, uh, is used in the success, successing year. Um, the one-year sheltering of new valuation creates tax revenues that are not specifically allocated in our budget to any place. And a couple of examples of that would be a couple of years ago we replaced the boiler at the middle school and that, was, that came out of OLA monies. Currently we're funding all of the work that we're doing at the recycling center in terms of the planning from overlay dollars. Um, in addition to that, we also um, I, we dealt with mold here in this building uh, from overlay dollars. Um, so it's important to recognize that uh, that overlay may be reduced uh, during a particular year uh, through abatements that might be approved by Matt Sturgis, our assessor, um, either due to um, just hardship abatements or those abatements that we deal with in our own meetings here as a town council. Uh, the overlay really serves as a temporary cash reserve, as I've just identified for you, relative to the boiler, the work at the recycling center, and also the mold um, uh, work that was done here in this building. So that's the explanation. Uh, you can read a lot about it if you, if you Google it, um, and you can see it's pretty much a standard here um, in the whole government <coughs> budget process, but it's one that I thought that um, that we needed to uh, to explain a little little more detail for the benefit of, of uh, those of you that have not experienced what overlay ha happens to be. The last piece of the finance committee meeting is that uh, we are approaching um, our first meeting um, of our finance committee, which would be on uh, Monday the 17th, and um, or rather it's not it's uh, sorry about that it's uh, Monday the 16th next Monday night. I'm saying the 17th because I like St. Patrick's Day. Um, <laughs> so the first review, we're going to be looking at accounts 100, 200, 400, 500, 600, 635, and 710. 
And I'm assuming you've all got this wonderful book for your bedtime reading uh, so that you can be prepared for the meeting. So the first one is on the 16th, the second one is on Wednesday the 18th, and that would be the uh, Municipal 300, 640, and 670, as well as special funds. Um, so following that, um, we will then um, reconvene um, in the Finance Committee mode to have the school budget presentation on Wednesday, or uh, actually Monday the 27th now, which is right after the school vacation week. Um, there is a bit of a problem with that evening in that the community service component <clears throat> of what the school board is asking, the um, director of community services can't be here that evening. And so um, I'm talking to Kathy Ray about the possibility we might have to reschedule something with the school board so that we can get that presentation as well because clearly we like to get both the school board as well as the community service presentation done by the particular um, leadership involved. So just to let you know that that's on the agenda as well. The rest of uh, the budget review schedule is in the front of the book. Um, I don't think there's anything uh, too unusual to it. I know that people have worked very hard to get us to where we are. I've been through this with Michael last Friday and my intention is to also um, work with the school board similar to what I did last year and have a meeting to go through line by line prior to our meeting. So, so that's what I have to report, and I thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Jim. Anybody <clears throat> have questions for Jim? <clears throat> okay, then we'll move on to citizen opportunity for discussions of items not on the agenda. And I don't think I see anybody, <clears throat> so we'll move on to that. Um, the town manager's monthly report. Michael. Yes, uh, thank you, Chairman. I want to mention just briefly a couple of things. Uh, one is I want to mention that the borrowing of the library is occurring. We, we will be getting the proceeds uh, on March 17th. Uh, the uh, official statement you have a copy of uh, in front of your place this evening. The interest rate ended up about 4.2 percent, uh, you know, which is about what was expected. Uh, the bond ratings came through, reaffirming the previous bond ratings. Uh, which, which, which are excellent, and uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll enables us to be fully ready to go to not only to get the uh, municipal library project done, but also the school projects that were part of that barn as well. Uh, those, referencing the library, uh, between now and the end of the week, we're going to be continuing to tear down the link uh, be between the two buildings. Uh, that is expected to be done by the end of the week. Uh, it was obviously been slow going with the weather, uh, but uh, it'll, be, it'll be nice to see that done. The, the building still overall on schedule to be done and occupied by the end of the calendar year. So, although the, the winter has affected some operations, uh, things are things are progressing well. Uh, speaking of winter, again, want to thank Public Works. Uh, they've just been out straight all the time. In fact, we, we had a meeting this morning. Uh, Peter Chief Gleason was there and heard that you know one of the one of the public works guys and perhaps more had worked 18 straight weekends, <clears throat> and you know when you you know, I, you know, they, you know the, the money's good but they you know and people do it for the money but at the same time no one expects to have to work 18 straight weekends and I think it's you know just in, in, indicative of the sacrifice so many of them have made of you know their personal lives uh, for the the last couple of months and uh, just the timing of the storms, the frequency of them, the extension of them, you know, everything about it's been bad uh, in terms of, uh, you know, trying to, trying to get by. But, you know, on the other side of it is, you know, the citizens and the people who drive on the roads in Cape Elizabeth have been barely affected, you know, their lives uh, by, by storms. It's, you know, yeah, maybe they're not out during the middle of the storm, but they're, they're out and about you know, immediately thereafter, and it just, I think, is indicative of the great job they've done. So again, want to thank them and recognize them for their dedication to the community. And uh, finally, I just want to thank, uh, congratulate the basketball team, the boys' basketball team, uh, who won their state championship for the first time since 1988, I think. And, you know, that's, you know, Cape Elizabeth is a, is a Class B school, and there's, you know, that means there's Class A schools, which are bigger schools, but then there's Class B, C, D, I don't know. And, you know, for Cape Elizabeth, which is, tends to be a smaller Class B school, to win a state championship is, is, is really a great achievement. So 
I want to congratulate uh, all of the folks associated with that program, especially the, the team members. So, thank you. Thank you, Mike. Great. Um, then we're going to review the draft minutes of February 9th, 2015 meeting. Um, is there a motion to accept? Jessica? I so move. Thank you. Is there a second? I'll Thank second. you, Molly. Discussion? Are there any errors, omissions? No? All right. Then all in favor? Any opposed? No. Nope. Okay. Great. <clears throat> um, then we will now open the public hearing in reference to political signs on traffic islands. Um, uh, <clears throat> so open, and I see there's nobody in the audience that are here for the public. So then I will close it, correct, Mike? And we will move on. So um, we're moving to uh, sec uh, Article 2 and permitted signs uh, for the sign ordinance, Chapter 21. And I will turn this over to um, Jamie to give us an update. Can you sure. tell us about this? Yeah, uh, from the Ordinance Committee, uh, due to the concerns regarding certain First Amendment uh, issues, the uh, Town Council referred to the Ordinance Committee a, a review of the sign ordinance regarding the regulation of political signs. We received advice from the Town Attorney Tom Leahy about that and reviewed that in the Ordinance Committee. Um, the Ordinance Committee unanimously voted 3-0 to zero to remove the prohibition on political sign placement in public rights of way, including traffic islands. Um, and the, we did agree to continue the uh, six-week time restriction on placement of political signs, but there was no prohibition, uh, at least if we change this ordinance, there'd be no further prohibition on placement of political signs in any public right-of-ways. Um, as previously disclosed, Councilor Jordan's family has an agricultural sign for their farm on, or on one or two traffic islands in the town. Um, but it's the recommendation of the Ordinance Committee to approve the revised ordinance. So that is the motion that we'd like to make? That would be the motion. Great. And is there a second? I'll second. Thank you, Jessica. Discussion? Questions? No? Okay. Then all in favor? None opposed. All right. Uh, moving on to item 42, <coughs> 2015, the Appointments Committee update. I will move that to Molly. Thank you. The Appointments Committee met in February. We had a fairly extensive meeting, even though we were only addressing three particular goals. The first one was the review of the appointments process and a discussion of how to further encourage citizen engagement. We came up with four specific recommendations. The very first one, I think, very simple and easy to implement. Um, we recommended putting a new icon on the town website that would allow citizens to email the council members directly. The icon should be bold and obvious, something simple. How to contact your council member or tell us what's on your mind, something that's obvious that um, citizens can touch and, and reach us immediately. Our second recommendation was to continue with the ongoing process of putting ads in the courier and making announcements uh, of openings at council meetings. And I'll use this opportunity to just mention that we do indeed have an opening right now for a position on the planning board. And I think, Deb, correct me if I'm wrong, I think we're looking for applications no later than March 18th. 18th, yes. Thank you. Our third recommendation is to ask resigning board or commission members to make recommendations for potential members to replace them on those uh, committees and commissions and boards. And then finally, we discussed setting up neighborhood meetings for council members to attend, probably in, uh, in, in pairs, um, where council members could go out into the community and meet and greet, give updates on council activities, and receive input directly from citizens. I think at some point in the future, Councilor Walsh will have some sample agenda material for us to discuss. We'll be back at you with that. Thank Correct. you for the reminder. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, our second goal was to talk about a, um, a, a way to approach best practices for note taking. I've made some very specific points here. I'm sure everybody has a copy of this, but just for the public's information, I will note that these comments are 
um, applicable to boards and committees other than the planning board, the CPA, or any other board or official involving conditional approval or denial of applications, licenses, and permits, etc. The town does hire minute takers for, for those boards, so I don't think we need to address that. And we're not proposing any changes on the note-taking process for planning board, uh, board of assessment review, and the CBA. Uh, we are recommending, however, that the council should provide boards and committees with a template to use. I attached a sample that could be used. It doesn't have to be that one in particular, but it gives some very specific guidance about what sorts of information ought to be included in the meeting minutes, and we can hand out copies of those templates. Uh, to individual boards and committees. We also recommend that a staff person or a designee is the preferred note taker and should be responsible for the notes preservation and administration. Uh, we would specifically like to recommend that meeting minutes should not be taken by the chair of the committee. I think that's too difficult a job to juggle both chairing a committee and taking the meeting minutes. We also talked about board and commission new member orientations. We recommended that this year that the uh, council liaison for each board or committee along with the board or committee chair hold new member orientations and that would provide new members with an overview of their responsibilities on the board, would give them a strategic plan review and any future direction uh, if possible to provide to those committees. Um, we also recommended giving new committee members an overview of expectations of decorum and committee participation expectations. Uh, we also would like to recommend that new members be provided with uh, best practices and a template again for meeting minutes and agendas and any legal requirements that they need to be aware of. Our next recommendation under that goal of the discussion of board and commission new member orientations was that in future upcoming years uh, that the council chair ask committees and boards for a set of goals and objectives for the coming year and that those goals and objectives should be provided to the council by September so that the council can review them and potentially incorporate those um, into the council goals and objectives and that would assist the committees with and the appointments committee specifically with interviewing potential candidates for openings on those boards and commissions for upcoming years or for, the, for that particular year. Next, the committee recommends that in upcoming years the council consider appointing a subcommittee to review the charges and goals and objectives and operating procedures of boards and commissions to ensure community-wide coordination and alignment of direction. We throw that out because I think, I, I think just um, good operating procedures for the council, I think, would dictate that we review that periodically. And whether that happens this year, next year, or in a future year, I do think that ought to happen on an ongoing basis. Last but not least, the committee recommends that the council request the manager and the town clerk develop an org chart, which includes the boards and commissions and their relationships to the council and to the town. I think that's it. I know that was a long list. <laughs> Thank you very much, Molly. Um, and I'm going to be looking for a motion to accept the report as delivered. I will accept the report as delivered. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Any discussion? Questions for Molly and her group? Thoughts? Comments? Yes? Uh, just to underscore one of the key elements in the presentation was that outreach effort to the neighborhoods and in the last year we heard some input from citizens about our goal setting process and being able to go out to the community and hear how well we're doing with the set of goals we currently have but also to solicit commentary about what are we missing what should we be thinking about so this agenda that Molly's asked me to construct is going to include some of that but but I think this whole out outreach effort was really an answer to that particular um, comment, uh, comments that were made by citizens in the last year. One that we, we've heard, we've just tried to figure out how we can actually put it together. So it's an interesting approach and one that we're all going to need to get comfortable with, especially if there are going to be two councils at a time going to a particular neighborhood. But we think we can design it in such a way that it will be rather seamless 
but really provide the kind of you know give and take that we're looking to get from the community. Thank you, Jim. <clears throat> Other thoughts? Yes, Molly? I'd also say that if that went well and people enjoyed doing that, that could be a part of an ongoing process every year. I do think that we're recommending at this point that we give it a try and see how it works and what kind of feedback and information we get from citizens in town. <clears throat> Other thoughts? Questions? Jessica? Yeah, I've got a question about uh, maybe we might want to think about going to a workshop on this, but uh, what um, with the email icon? I mean, people are able to email us, but you're envisioning that there's something on the front door of the website. Exactly. I think right now, for people to email the council, they actually have to get into. I think it's the tab on the second page of the website, and then they need to find where the town council is under that tab. And what we're proposing is right on the home page that there's something big and bold. It, it looks bigger right now, but I'm envisioning it's, you know, maybe an, an inch by an inch. Yeah, it's the size of whatever this is, the so town seal or something. And, then yeah. right and so it would be on the home page, and, and it, people could tap on that rather than having to scroll through to the second page and then the scroll down to the town council. And this would be. Uh, an email to essentially email all the counselors at yes. once. Yes. Yes. Okay. It just it moves that link to the home page rather than having to find it on the second page. Okay. And is your um, the the template uh, that you're suggesting for minute taking? This would be voluntary, I presume? Yes. I, I'm recommending that it is voluntary and that we provide something so that the note takers have a template to use if they want to. They don't have to use that particular format. I'm happy to have them use whatever format they'd like to. I'd like to provide them with that template that would give them kind of a fill in the blank so they understand what the important information is that I think we need to include in the meeting minutes, and that includes things like, and it's, it's on the template that I handed out, it includes who attended the meeting, uh, what the agenda items were, um, who took the meeting minutes, those sorts of things. They're all detailed on that template. Just about the meeting minutes. I mean, I'm not sure that a template is exactly what we we're looking for when I brought the goal up anyhow about note taking. I mean, I've been looking at notes and everyone seems to get the gist of who's in attendance and who made a motion. That's not the problem, I guess, with note taking in my view. It's who's taking the minutes. Are we going to designate that staff members always take the minutes so committee members are not having to be burdened by both participating and taking minutes? If you say it's too hard for the chairperson to take the minutes, it's just as difficult for somebody who's trying to participate and actively engage in the meeting to take those minutes at the same time as well, in, in my opinion. So I'd love to, as Jessica said, maybe take this to a workshop and we could discuss exactly how we're going to implement after we receive this report. Yes, you can see that we had staff person or, or their designee is preferred for note taking. I, I can envision there might be times when that wouldn't work. But I think that should be the preferred process. Mm -hmm. uh, Michael. So if, if this motion passes, uh, you know, the intent, we, you know, we'd, we have a department head meeting once a month, but I think we'd try to have an interim one in, you know, in the next couple of weeks where Deborah, who's staffed this committee, would go over this recommendation with department heads. And, mm -hmm. and then, you know, for, we'll go through every single board and commission and, and, and try to come up with, uh, you know, a, an understanding probably the staff person is going to be doing uh, all of the various minutes uh, for those meetings. But you know, we'll see. We'll, we'll go through it. And, uh, we'll look at the template. We'll look at all the recommendations. See what we can do. I think our goal in providing that template was to make it easy, not difficult. Yeah. Uh, the, the point in the comment I just made basically is you know, this is going to take a month or two to, to, uh, to change the current practices. They won't, don't, because the minutes, uh, you know, you'll be still getting minutes from the old system uh, uh, for, for meetings that have already been had. So. Jamie. I guess one of the questions I have about the minutes for committees is how comprehensive we want them to be. If we're going to have a template concept, are we going to try to follow a, a certain paradigm for each committee where we only capture a certain amount of data? Are we going to try to do a verbatim? 
uh, capture of what's discussed because some committees you'll have one note taker that really almost captures in a quotation form everybody that's spoken and other ones you'll have a very rough shod uh, discussion of uh, you know what occurred in summary so I guess says you know what's the will of the council on what our goal is as far as minutes taking is I'll just respond to that by saying, and I have a paragraph in here, generally speaking, Maine Freedom of Access Act, FOAA, requires a record of most meetings. The record needs to include only the time, date, and place of the meeting, board members present and absent, and all motions and votes taken by individual member if by roll call. There are no legal requirements for minutes or a narrative of comments or discussion. Members of the public are permitted to record board meetings. So if people have concerns, they are allowed to record them if you're looking for the actual verbatim mm -hmm. recording. But I think there's no requirement for that. And I think that for the boards involved, as we just did tonight, we approve our own meeting minutes. Every board does that as well. So I think you have a system of checks and balances in place where the person taking the meeting minutes records what happens and then those meeting minutes are handed back out to the boards <coughs> and committees to approve on their own. And Molly, wouldn't this be outlined though in like the best practices section when you did the trainings? We were talking about like you know, agendas, timely manner. It should be you know within 48 hours before a meeting. Minutes should be recorded, you know, and get back within you know two weeks or some kind of things like that. Would, wouldn't that make sense? Yes, and I do think that falls within those best practices because. I don't know about anyone else, but within two weeks, I may have forgotten some of the finer details of whatever it is that we've discussed in the meeting. But we did have note-taking best practices, um, and one of the first questions, I don't know if people had a chance to look at this, one of the most important things is, will it matter in two days, two weeks, two months, or two years? If yes, then these things need to go in. Uh, but there are also some other recommendations here on, on note-taking best practices to summarize. Don't record conversations generally word for word. There typically is not a need for that unless you're on one of those, uh, I call them quasi-governmental boards and committees like the planning board, the ZBA, or any other board or official involving conditional approval or denial of applications, license permits, etc. So I, I think everyone has a copy of this best practices. If anybody's missing it, I can send out another copy. Thank you. Michael? That gives some good guidance. I I would, then Caitlin? You know, as far as trying to give instruction to the note takers, you know, I, first of all, I would have them look at the council minutes as a guy. Uh, it, it does indicate action taken. It, take, it indicates who made the motion. It indicates the vote. Secondly, you know, to me, the, the most important thing, I think you know, Molly alluded to it, is if someone picked up these minutes 10 years from now, is there enough in the written motion in the minutes so that the motion is clear as to what they were trying to get at, what they were trying to do? Uh, so you, you need a little bit more than, than just the motion if, if it isn't clear. But at the same time, you know, I've also found working on a lot of different committees, once you begin to try to quote, this one said this, this one said that, you waste an awful lot of time with people saying, well, that's not exactly what I said. And, and oftentimes, it is what they said, but they, maybe they weren't happy with the fact they said that, you know, in, in reflection. Right. And, you know, what I'd like to try to do is to avoid putting the department heads, who are going to be the note takers, in a position where they're spending an inordinate amount of time dealing with folks that feel as though they haven't been exactly quoted. Correctly, so the, 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 the bias would be against a lot. Mm -hmm. He said this, she said this, but only to the point that it makes clear what the intent of the motion is. Thank you, Michael. Caitlin? No, Mike covered it pretty well, just finding a proper balance. I mean, I think with our transparency and open communication policy that we've been putting forward over the past few years, we want more than so and so made motion, so and so second it, it passed. Mm -hmm. So I just like to see more than bare bones. I'll just weigh in. Um, I don't um, necessarily agree with um, Caitlin. I think that the notes should um, reflect the motions made and, the, and the, um, the votes taken. And I don't think it should be he said, she said, um, because that's really not 
um, the crux of the meeting. The meeting is about what, what passed and what didn't. Um, and who said what is really uh, not important in, in my um, recommend, in, in my in my thoughts. The other thing is is I want to go back to the part about being um, uh, the website and having our um, emails out there. And I'm I'm not sure I'm understanding what it is that we're not currently doing that you're recommending that we do. Um, I, I guess I'm comfortable with where we are right now, and I'm not sure I'm understanding <coughs> why you're recommending to be a little bit more up, you know, upfront and stuff. So if I look on the town website right now, I understand where we are. Okay. I understand the level we're at, and I, I guess, right. So I'm, I'm okay with that. <laughs> so. See this that we have a button sort of like this size mm -hmm. that says contact the council or email your council, whatever it is. So that people, particularly if you're new to contacting the council, if you never have sent the council emails before, I'll just say that is a position I was in until a year or two ago. Every single time I went to the council to the website, which was infrequent, I would then need to go and figure out, oh, now where is that? It should be on the home page, but it's not. It's on the government page. So then I go to elected officials, and there's the town council. And then there's a list of members and current members. And, and so all I'm saying is it takes a little digging to get to that point. So if we had something on the home page, and it was about this size and easy, and you could tap it, count, contact your council members, it skips a few steps in the process. It makes it easier for the citizens to get to us. And I can't imagine it's difficult to incorporate that into the front page of the website. I understand what you're saying. Michael. I think it's fairly interesting. My, my query with that is by having it so prominent on the front page, you're going to get a lot of emails that have nothing to do with the town council, you know, in, in the day-to-day -day business. There's a pothole that needs to be filled. Mm. Uh, you know, I have a sewerage backup, and you know they're gonna, uh, <laughs> you know, it might, it, or it's a salesperson <laughs> trying to sell, you know, sell you some, yeah. sell the town we something. Don't want those. I worry that it's going to be so, con you know, it, by having it on that front page, the council is going to be getting all these emails that really, you know, we people already, people are gonna, I don't, you know, because that's the easiest way to send something to the town. We already are. But you don't get too many of them. I think if you put no. it out on the front page like that, you, you're going to get a lot more of those. I, I want, we get an awful lot of them. I, I want a police patch. I want a fire department patch. You know, we get those constantly. Uh, Jamie's next. Yeah, if, I guess on the front page there is, in small font up in the upper right-hand corner, a contact us, which you, you expect on every website to have a contact yeah. us link on the first page. It is very small font, smaller than some of the other ones. Now, when you click on that, it takes us to a page where it has both Mike's link, Deborah's link, all councilors, boards and commissions, and school board members. Notably, councilors is bigger font than Deborah and Mike. Maybe we should switch that the opposite way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> maybe we should list them all up, and maybe Mike's the biggest, and then us a little bit after. But see that? I was going to say, it's yeah. typical on a home page to have a contact us link right. that then does something like Jamie is suggesting. Right. And maybe it's just that that contact us bigger, needs to be more prominent. You know, more yeah. prominent exactly. yeah. I, I just don't want you to have to deal with police patch issues. Neither do we. Uh, Jessica. Or potholes. Or potholes, yeah. Potholes. I have some other questions, but I would like to make a motion. Oh, we, we have a motion on the motion. table to accept oh, the report. The um, okay. So if we... Yes, go ahead. I'm sorry. All right. Well, I then I forgot, sorry, I forgot that. I'd like to add that I have another concern about the email suggestion because we have been scammed. We've been getting some scammed right. yes. emails, and I'm thinking that what we have is more than mm -hmm. adequate and may protect us to some degree against getting more scammed stuff. So we, we've been getting stuff, and I, you know. But anyway, that was all. Jim? Just clarification. We have the motion to accept it, but we're going to go to workshop. Is that correct? Well, I guess that's Maybe we'll... Is that what Well, it sounded like Michael was looking for some time to work out some of the details as well. So I'm hearing that there's some yeah. details that folks maybe want to 
discuss further? Yes, and uh, Chairman Ray, what I was going to do was offer to make a motion to go to workshop, but I'd forgotten we already had a motion on the table to accept the report. Well, so let's work with. Oh, I'm sorry. We can accept it. We don't have to do anything. Because I think we need to think a little bit more, for example, about the neighborhood meetings and how does that get structured. And I think that's a part of a bigger discussion. So I think if we, we, can just, we can just accept, accept this and then go to work. report. And then the next motion is that we go to workshop with it. Let's vote on the acceptance of the report unless uh, Jessica. Chairman, the right point of information, yes. point of order, we might be able to amend the, tape, the uh, amendment on the table to include a workshop. Yeah. Okay. I can. Um, um, I'm sorry, who made the motion? I did. So it would be, um, I would like to amend my motion to um, include that we discuss this further um, after acceptance um, in a workshop. Okay. Except the amendment was the second. All right. All right. Any additional discussion? No. All in favor? Moving on. Thank you. You made it through that. <laughs> <laughs> um, moving on to item 43, 2015, rescue fields, seize updates, and I believe um, the fire chief is here to give us an overview. Can we get a fire patch first? <laughs> no, I, I delete those emails as soon as I, I don't even read them. No, no. <laughs> well, part of it is because we can't control what's done with it. Their official patches, and that, and they cost four dollars. Um, <laughs> okay, so we're everybody pop up their four dollars. Did, did you get a call? <laughs> yeah, that's fire patch. Oh, get away. And before you, you have the rate increases that we're proposing. Uh, this is the first time we've been before you in five years to increase the rescue rates. Uh, the revenues that are generated from the rescue fees cover the cost of the rescue, all the equipment, the personnel. also covers the cost of all the uh, equipment that's in the police cars. Those of you that don't know, all the police cars have full EMS equipment in them, and all of our police officers are EMTs. And because of that, we are the envy of a lot of services in the area that not only do we have a police officer on every rescue call, they are trained emergency medical technicians. So. Generally in Cape Elizabeth, you have an EMT on scene in less than five minutes, closer to three. We have between three and five, so they can institute, they have every piece of equipment that, you know, they have an AED, they have oxygen, they have all the basic equipment to support life until the ambulance gets there. So that's, that's a very important feature of our system and has worked very well for us. Um, we're also looking in the next fiscal year budget to increase the number of hours of per diem coverage during the day. Uh, right now we're currently relying on a handful of people to handle the bulk of our calls. About six people handle probably the 50% of the calls. So we're a little concerned about burning those people out and wearing them out. And also if we lose a couple of them, uh, we could be in, in, have some coverage issues. So we just like to increase that, that coverage to make sure that we do have that ALS provider on for 16 hours a day. At nighttime, for the uh, rescue is divided into night duty groups and all of them have an ALS provider on them. They rotate through seven groups. So yeah, that's that 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. range, which is never a pleasant time for anybody to get out of bed and go face something. So we try to cover that. Also, the, one of the, the reasons I'd like to change from our current system to the, the new system is we currently use a menu now. And it's difficult to do projections because you have to look at every call and see what medications were administered, what treatments, all that sort of thing. And with the new system, we'll have a basic EMS call and, and an advanced life support EMS call. So. It's a lot easier. We can go in, run a report, and say last year we had 400 ALS calls and 400 basic calls. So it's a lot easier to project what the revenues would be. That's basically a summation of what we're looking to do with this. Questions? I'll, I'll take the first question. Um, I noticed that you um, are not doing the individual like IV drug administration, oxygen, and so forth. So am I understanding that you're including that in the in the ALS charge? Yes. Yes. So you just if that's the call, whatever is required, it's still like either, it's still now $900. For instance, the main EMS changes the protocol, so if they institute treatments that aren't curling in our protocols, we would have to come back to the council every time. They made a rule change to come and ask you if we could increase that fee. Mm -hmm. This is just a lot cleaner as they change. They review their practices every three years and make changes. This is just a lot easier if we can just have a straight ALS fee. Right, thank you. Other questions? Yes, Jim? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. The uh, proposed uh, increases, Peter, um, are they based on, um, you know, area or um, sort of looking at other communities or 
what's allowed by insurance support or whatever? It's generally what the insurance companies will bear, uh, and it's similar to what other some communities are doing this. Um, BLS, ALS, and some are still using the menu, okay. and some communities have higher rates, but the insurance companies will only pay X amount of dollars. So you can, if you want to charge fifteen hundred dollars, you can, but the insurance company is going to say we're going to top that at nine hundred or whatever. So we just we. We work with our billing company, Medical Reimbursement, and find out what's the reasonable and customary and what the insurance companies will bear and go from there. Follow-up, yes. Follow-up question. And, and why haven't we uh, looked at these for since 2009? Is there any reason why? No, I, I was in conversation with Sean McPherson, who runs the company this summer, and I've been looking at that since then. He proposed this, this different method of billing. That's the first time I really took a look at it. Patty? Sorry. The question is, why don't we re yeah, increase yeah. the rates every year? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it, it's generally the insurance companies look at it every couple of years, it, and the costs aren't significantly changing unless we had, uh, you know, I don't know, would have, would have to have something significantly different every year. Mm -hmm. Any chance to go retrospectively at some of these and recoup the new number? I mean, we've left some money on the table here if we haven't looked at this in five years or six years. That's all. I just, oh, yeah. Most of them have already been billed and paid. Mm -hmm. yeah. It just seems kind of odd that we wouldn't have looked at this more on an annual basis or every other year, but whatever. Uh, Patty, then Jessica. I guess I would follow up um, for your question. I, when I looked at this, um, and I did talk to Peter about it earlier, um, but I think it's worth educating those of us who are new to this. Um, when I'm looking at the total budget and the rescue, it's based on your rescue calls, um, the estimated rate is 75% collectible. So my thought went to, um, you know, that's a 25% outstanding. And I, my question was, what's the mechanism to collect that? And, um, and how, why aren't we collecting it? And how does that compare to other communities? And you had a great answer, so I thought it would be a good thing to share. If we look at other communities, and I want to quote percentages, but we, we are on the higher end of it. We collect in the 70, 75% range. Again, because a lot of our community has insurance. Uh, some of the non-collectibles are people give us bad information uh, or people, you know, if we take them from Fort William to Crescent Beach, they figure they're never coming back to Cape Elizabeth, so they get the bill from Cape Elizabeth and they say, I'm never going back there, so they just don't bother to pay it. And currently, we, we bill three times and we don't pursue it after that. Our collection rate really is pretty good. If you looked at the city of Portland's, theirs is not anywhere near what ours is. And a lot of ours is private insurance versus main care, and main care pays at a lesser rate than private insurance, well, depending on what you have for coverage. Mm. Yeah. Jessica? Uh, my question's been answered. Thank you, okay. Chairman Ray. Other questions? Oh. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Are we taking a vote on this, Michael? Yes? Okay. So. Um, um, Jim? I'd like to move that we accept the, uh, the Chief of Police, uh, rather, Chief of the Fire Department's um, rescue fee update um, as included in today's packet. Thank you. Number 43. Is there a second? Caitlin? Um, more discussion? Questions? No? Okay. All in favor? Anyone opposed? No? All right. Uh, moving on to item 44-2015, the town manager's recommendation recommended fiscal year 2016 municipal budget. Um, did you, yes. Presentation? Yes. Yeah. Some years I do a presentation at this meeting, some years I don't. I'll, I'll make a brief one. You, you, you have this presentation so you don't have to train your neck to look at the back uh, on, uh, at your places. Uh, Snowflakes. Uh, nice touch. Anyway, nice. rather than call it the budget bottom line, I'm calling it the top line. Uh, it's up 6.3%. Uh, that's primarily because of the library, it's half of the increase. Uh, it would increase the tax bill by about 1.5%, and that's because uh, you know, the school and the other increases are there as well. It, it's about a 27 cent uh, increase. Uh, personnel is, is always a, a major issue driving force in the budget. It's, it's a little over half of the budget. Under this budget, most employees would receive about a 2.5% increase. The public works contracts actually 1.5, but then an additional 1% into retirement, but that adds up to 25 
health insurance costs are going up by, by about 40000 And that's because of some, a little bit of change in the library in terms of part-time versus full-time. But it's, but, but it's even more so, and it's not really a rate increase. What, what it is is that we, as employees have left and other employees have come in, we have more employees who are married, who are receiving full coverage, you know, for, for full family coverage and not single coverage. And there were actually about five of those positions changed this year, uh, you know, town-wide. So that, that's why health insurance is up. Workers' comp is up 31 uh, percent. That's almost totally due to a change in the experience modification. The experience modification is based on the claims history, and there's been a number of claims uh, in the school department and uh, one or two in the municipal departments that have caused that to go up the last couple of years. And, uh, you know, it's something that we need to focus on more. Uh, you know, some of those workers' comp costs are unavoidable, but what they've been critical of us is that we're not as aggressive as we could be in back to work uh, when, when, when people uh, have injuries, which then goes to the next recommendation is that there's, uh, there's $35,000 proposed in the budget for half the cost of a human resource assistant to be shared with the school department. This is not a, an HR director, this is an HR assistant, but someone who will do a lot more freeing up the time of other, this person will do more routine work, freeing up the time of other individuals to do uh, more of the, the, the back to work and workers' comp type stuff, as well as having everyone, you know, looking at benefit administration and uh, all the different aspects. We'll be talking about that uh, more next week. The library, uh, the budget contained 290,000. The actual cost actually came in at about 307,000. The difference is the 290 was based on a borrowing closer to July 1st, and we ended up, we, we were borrowing the money March 17th because the interest rates were lower. We wanted to avoid the risk of having an interest rate increase and because, you know, the project's beginning to spend money. So that's why it's, it's slightly more. Uh, the, the true interest cost of the library is about 2.4%. Uh, the library debt's $4 million, and the, the number's scary. The debt will be fully paid on March 15th, 2035. Mm -hmm. Seems like a long ways away. You know, there's, there's other little, you know, retirement costs, as I mentioned, there's a, there's a the public works is, is up 1%, although I'm going to return to that in a, in a minute or two. Uh, there's some monies that the Conservation Commission is going to come and talk to you about that they'd like to have a Greenbelt Trail encroachment to do surveying and to, to make sure that the town land is clear from where private property is. Uh, 12,000 for maintenance of the GIS system. Uh, the facilities maintenance, a lot of our buildings are getting older. A lot of them were built around the year 2000 and they didn't need a whole lot of maintenance. They need more maintenance now. Legal services, you know, just today, you know, there were a $6,000 bill came in for legal services, that Verizon lawsuit, uh, you know, the lawyers keep filing stuff and some read summary for dismissals or whatever they're called, you know, and every time you respond to those things, you, you incur cost. Uh, and street lights, uh, that, those are for the street lights, the blinkers, and, and that's more is when, when I actually looked at all the bills and looked at the electricity energy charges, uh, it, it, it looks like it's insufficiently budgeted. Uh, capital needs were originally identified this year as costing about a million and a half. Uh, the, we did a long-term financial plan that worked with the council that proposed through the capital improvement program that we try to increase by 100,000 each year. So the budget, would, it was 900,000 last year, that would have provided for uh, a million this year. Uh, the budget though provides for uh, 950,000 or 50,000 more than last year or 50,000 less than what the projection was, although the, the need was still another 50% more than that at 1.5 million. But I hope to bridge the difference with savings and retirement costs. And what that is is every year, about this time, we get an estimate from the main PERS, the main uh, uh, personnel employee retirement system, uh, that indicates what we need to pay for retirement costs for our legacy plan. And the preliminary phone conversation I had with them uh, last week is that because of investment returns last year, we expect that cost to go down for both the town and the school department. And I think it may go down sufficiently so that I'm uh, maybe coming back with a recommendation to to go back to the million dollars. Uh, so we'll, we'll see how that evolves and hope to get, I don't have anything in writing yet in my past experiences with the Main State Retirement System, I like to get stuff in writing. Uh, the capital funding as it now stands, there's uh, about 435,000 
to continue roadway paving, the, the main projects that are proposed for next year, that the paving of uh, Old Ocean House Road from Route 77 to Route 77, past Shore Acres and through there. Uh, and I invite anyone to go look at it. You can see the, the, the need. And on Spurrink Avenue between uh, Route 77 and the South Portland Line heading east uh, is, is the other, that's about an $80,000 project. Uh, there's a front end load to do for replacement, a couple of police cruises, a pickup truck, which is, you know, also includes related gear. We don't just spend 40000 for a pickup truck. Uh, 30000 for body work to uh, one of the fire trucks and high school tennis court repair. Uh, those, those need work again. Uh, revenues, the excise tax revenue is, is up about 100000 or so. People are buying new cars. They're expensive cars. The, they pay 2.4% in the first year of the value of the car. And as people begin to buy these newer, bigger SUVs, as gas prices go down, uh, they, you know, they end up, they save in gas, but they end up paying a little bit more to the town uh, for uh, excise tax. Uh, state revenue sharing is declining to 430000 and just to mention that that, that 430000 under the governor's budget proposal would be zero in fiscal year 2017. And again, the legislature, I think you all see the, the materials from the Maine Municipal Association and other sources you have, and that's under heavy debate. Uh, Jim Walt, finance chair, has called a meeting of the Finance Committee for March 16th, at which the municipal budget is going to begin to review. That's going to continue on the 18th, I think it's Monday and Wednesday of next week. You're meeting with the school board on the 27th of April. The, the public hearing on the budget is May 12th, and the citizen vote on the school budget will be June 9th. And I just figured after the snowflakes, uh, uh, we started with something brighter. It's budget season, and hope springs <laughs> eternal. And uh, you know, but let's, let's think spring and think more positive. So I look forward when there's warm weather. Uh, you know, it'll be May, and the tools will be out by the time the budget process uh, gets done. So. Happy to answer any questions, although you'll have lots of opportunities to ask questions uh, at the, the upcoming meetings. Thank you, Michael. Any preliminary questions? Huh? Uh, I have one Molly. other question. Are you anticipating um, more road repairs this year based on the winter that we've had? You know, it, it's, uh, uh, yeah, you just look at those frost heaves out there. And, yes. You know, whenever you have these, these cold and warmer <coughs> cycles, whatever, it just, and you know, if, if there isn't good drainage on a road, if you don't have a crown, you don't have good drainage on the side, the water gets into the roads and goes up and down. That's what we're seeing now on, uh, on Old Ocean House Road. We're seeing it on parts of Route 77. There's a couple of bumps. There was one on Coalfield Road. There's a hole in the road in Coalfield Road. There was a hole in, yeah, a hole in the road. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, you know, this time of year is really bad for roads. And, you know, have, you know heavier traffic, you know, all, just all the plow trucks out there all the time. That's not helping exactly. the roads with, right. uh, with their loads. But yeah, it's uh, the, the, you know. Fortunately, we, we, we you know the council has invested in some good road work the last few years. The Charles Jordan Road. I think anyone that's traveled the outer part of Route 77, uh, you know, out by the being by the sea, you know, what a difference. It's very nice. As a result of the just a little bit of crown in the road that gets the water off to the sides. You know, last year that was all all, all over the place as a result of, you know, the the, the, the road was misshaped. Caitlin. Are we going to try and get Old Ocean done before August for the Beach to Beacon? What about Old Ocean House Road? Are we going to try and get it done before the Beach to Beacon? I'd like to get it done before strawberry season, Caitlin. That would be even better. I don't know. It'll, it'll, be, it'll be after July 1. But it, you know, what we'll try to do is to make sure it doesn't interfere with the race. But that's something that's probably going to take a couple of days. And, uh, but we try to get these done as soon as possible. But you know, who knows with the, when the paving plants open and what else they're doing. And, you know, the commercial sector, how busy they are getting stuff paved. But, uh, you know, once the budget is approved, Bob will uh, <clears throat> try to get it scheduled and, you know, probably for, for July because, you know, there's, there's only so many days in July and then you get rain. And, you know, we don't want, we don't want it being paved a couple of days before Beach to Beacon because a lot of folks are out there practicing and uh, we might skip to, skip, skip to August. Any other questions? Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Need a motion? Uh, yes, well, yes, we need a motion to refer this to the Finance Committee. 
I move that we move the um, town manager's recommended 2016 municipal budget to the finance committee. Thank you, Jim. Is there a second? Jessica? A second. Thank you. Discussion? Nope. All in favor? Thank you. None opposed. Okay. Uh, next is citizen opportunity for discussion of items not on the agenda. Still seeing no citizens that look like they're interested. I, I will move on beyond that. And then, um, Michael, I understand we're going to recess into workshop format and have a public workshop to discuss the recent findings of the study to undertaken to take action to eliminate the combined sewer overflow at Ottawa Road? Not tonight. Not tonight. Okay. Just kidding. So I will um, ask for a motion to move into executive session and please read um, the item directly. Yes, no. Thank you, Jessica. <coughs> I move <coughs> that Cape Elizabeth Town Council in conformance with 1 MRSA section 6 AD and E hereby enters into executive session to continue the annual evaluation process for the town manager and to receive an update from the town manager on collective bargaining with the Cape Elizabeth Police Benevolent Association. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Jim. Any discussion? All in favor? And I will uh, assume we will not be coming back into public session in the um, chambers after this. So, thank you. Yeah.